Hello, this is Toby, and I'm here to present Greek mythology. How could it be worse? It could be raining. Shit. So far, we have mainly focused on Greek gods, their origins and their traits, but we have not discussed their relationship with humans very much, and here we are to do so. Hesiod's Theogony mostly involves the stories of gods and there is hardly any mention of human beings. However, there is a point in his book when he starts to talk about the first sacrifice, Prometheus, and the creation of the first woman, Pandora. Let's start with Prometheus. Prometheus is a titan and therefore could be considered a Zeus's cousin. During the Clash of the Titans, he was one of those who sided with Zeus rather than the other titans, and that's why he was saved. <laughs> During the sacrifice ritual held as a resolution of conflict between men and gods, Prometheus tries to deceive <laughs> Zeus. When the ox is sacrificed, he offered two parts of the sacrificed animal to Zeus to choose from. Here are the choices. 1. The meat hidden inside the stomach, so it was something desirable, but with an undesirable exterior. And two, the bones wrapped in fat, something not eatable, but with a beautiful and shiny exterior. So Zeus knows what this guy is up to, but plays innocent and chooses the bones. <laughs> ha ha ha, you fooled me. This story in fact explains why humans started eating meat and burned the bones for the gods. Prometheus, have you heard of Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle? Yes. More dice. Oh, I challenge you to a battle of wits then. Here is the ox from the sacrifice. Do you want the bones or do you want the meat? Hmm. Give me the bones. Here you are. Hmm. Did you just see what I did? I tricked you. I knew you wanted me to choose the bones, but I could choose the meat. So I knew you would figure I would choose the meat, so I went for the bones. But if the meat is my choice, you would give the bones to humans, and the meat would be mine. So I should have gone for the meat, but I went for the bones, you see? Seriously, I didn't understand shit. Hmm, never mind. How's your liver? Shit. Now, as a result of Prometheus' trick, Zeus decides to punish humans. Yes, it sounds crazy. A titan deceived Zeus and he decides to punish someone else? What the hell man? But yeah, it is what it is. The punishment was to hide the fire from men. Saying this, Prometheus comes to the rescue of man and steals fire and gives it to humanity. Now as a result of this, Zeus brings a greater punishment. This time targeting Prometheus too. He chains Prometheus on a mountain with an eagle to come over every day and eat his liver. His liver then to grow for the next day for Mr. Eagle to come again and have a go at it. And as for humans, he has something else in mind. How was your day? Oh, horrible, horrible. There is nothing good to mention to be honest. Well, cheer up Prometheus, it could be worse. How could it be worse? It could be raining. Shit. The punishment for men is something I could say worse. <laughs> Zeus orders his son and the god of smithery, Hephaestus, to fashion the first woman named Pandora. Hermes, the messenger of Zeus and other gods, takes Pandora and brings her to Prometheus' brother, Epimetheus. The idea is to make her his bride. Pandora was given a jar or a box and was instructed not to open the box at all. She cannot help herself so she opens it. The box contained all the miseries and pains you can think of, but it also contained hope. So she opens the box and all the pains are unleashed upon men. However, hope cannot escape the jar. So the idea I assume is to say that yes, the world is all evil because of this lady, but there is still hope. Epi, this is Pandora. Hey girl. Hello sir. Okay, go ahead and propose to him. Why? He should propose to me. I said go ahead and propose. Stupid girl. Epimetheus. Will you marry me? 
Who told you to open that stupid box? I thought it was a ring! Damn! You can see what these stories do. They are trying to justify some rituals and some stuff that happened in the Greek world. For example, some vegetarians came and asked, why should we kill animals? So some anti-vegetarians came and said, because it is the will of God, they want the bones. And so the vegetarians said, ha, huh, okay, no worries then. Or the men stopped complaining together about their wives, so they answered themselves, ha, huh, it is Zeus's punishment. <laughs> People also probably asked why during winter there is no food or fruit. So they said, okay, there is another story for that. And here is the story. Well, the story is that the god of the underworld, Hades, felt lonely and wanted to have a girl for himself. So he decides Persephone, the daughter of Demeter, is the one. Demeter was the goddess of harvest. So Hades kidnaps Persephone. And Demeter starts looking for her. Finally, gods find out Persephone is in the underworld. They ask Hades to give her back. Hades says, sure, why not, but tricks Persephone into eating pomegranate seeds. The rules are that if you eat in the underworld, you belong in the underworld. And now there is nothing gods can do. Finally, they reach an agreement through which Persephone is required to spend one third of the year with Hades and the rest she can return to her mommy. In that one third of the year when Persephone is away, Demeter grieves and cries and neglects vegetation. And that's why we have winter. Bye mommy! Bye daughter! <laughs> Hello hobby! Hello wifey! Bye hobby! Bye wifey! Hello mommy! Hey, daughtery. Another example of human relations with gods is in the hero stories. Heroes are those beings that are neither gods nor normal humans. There is always something about them that makes them rise from their human level, but there is also some limit that doesn't let them become gods. The story of Heracles or Hercules is a great example in this regard. In the next lecture, we will turn to Heracles.